Hey, it's Jang from UltimateRC.com and today I'm going to be looking at the FSGT2 uh, 2.4 GHz radio system from FlySky and you can find this for about 30 bucks at HobbyParts.com, 35 bucks shipped. Um, a lot of budget-minded hobbyists out there have been a little bit reluctant to try these out. They've been on the market for a little while, but the thing that kind of holds you back is that it's just so cheap. 30 bucks for a 2.4 gigahertz radio system with a receiver included. Um, I know I was a little bit reluctant myself, but finally, here it is. I'm taking the plunge, I'm gonna take a good look at it and look at its features and then go out to the fields and see how it performs. First off, first impressions. As far as the feel in my hand, uh, it actually has a good feel. There are uh, textured areas, even though it's all hard plastic, there are textured areas around the front and back of the grip. And it, you know, it fits, fits in the hand pretty well. There's plenty of room for, whether you have small hands or large hands, uh, plenty of room for you to get a grip on it. And it feels pretty good. The balance is a little bit forward of where I'd want it to be. So it feels like I'm, it wants to tip just a little bit, but it's not, not too bad in that sense. The wheel has a synthetic rubber uh, ring going around it and it has a little bit of ribbing on it to give you a little bit more tra traction for your fingers and it, uh, it is definitely comfortable. It's a little bit soft. The one thing that I do not like about the steering is this. You can see that there's a lot of bounce in there and this is something that you will commonly see on low-end radio systems, even ones that cost twice as much as this, even three times as much as this, but it is something that uh, could be improved on. Looking at the features that are available for setting it up, those are all right under here. I'm not even going to bother to zoom in on this really close because the, the writing is molded into the smoke colored plastic and it's very thin and small and it's actually kind of uh, hard to see. There are three knobs and those are your steering trim, your throttle trim, and your steering dual rate. So just your, just your basic controls. You've got your steering and throttle reversing here. There's a power LED to indicate that it's on, and the other LED is to indicate uh, the status of your battery. And then down in the middle, is a bind button for binding to your receiver and that's really recessed and it's 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 almost impossible to push that with just your fingers unless you have a rather pointed fingernail or you have really small fingers uh, but they do have a tool that they give you for reaching down in there and hitting that there are two ports here one of them is a uh, charge port and they do offer up a, a charger specifically for this and then the other port over here is actually the direct servo connect or DSC port, which honestly is not that useful nowadays with 2.4 gigahertz radio systems. You don't have to worry about uh, controlling somebody else's car on accident when you're in the pits, but they do have a secondary use for that port. They give you this with the package. This is a USB adapter, which hooks into your DSC port and what this does is it allows the controller to become a PC, computer controller. So you can use this and hook up your, your FSGT2 radio system and play something like uh, Real Race or uh, VRC, Virtual RC. The receiver that's included is absolutely tiny. It's one of the smallest receivers that I've seen coming with any low-end radio system especially very thin, it's very low profile, it weighs almost nothing, and it has a fairly short antenna on it as you would expect with a 2.4 gigahertz system. And then they also include the very necessary binding plug, uh, which is just, it's a jumper plug similar to what you would see on Spectrum systems. So now I'm gonna go ahead and try out binding this system together. You're gonna take your binding tool, the jumper, and plug that into the channel three, or also noted as the binding uh, channel on the receiver. And then you need to get power to the receiver. So if you're using an external receiver pack, plug in the receiver pack now. Otherwise, if you have an electric 
vehicle and turn on your speed control, which is going to give power to the receiver. Now I'm going to take the little plastic toothpick tool and use that to push the button, the bind button on the transmitter. This is going to look a little bit awkward because I'm doing it backwards for the camera. It's not as hard as it looks. And then holding the bind button down on the transmitter, turn on the transmitter itself. There's a light blinking on the transmitter. The green light is blinking, which they, they uh, make a little bit of reference to accidentally in the manual. They say there will be two lights blinking. One of them is actually on the transmitter. One is on the receiver. When the one on the receiver stops blinking, that means that you're bound. So this one has already stopped blinking. It's the red light up here in the corner. It stopped almost immediately, meaning that the binding occurred immediately. They say in the manual it can take up to five seconds. Every time that I've tried this, it's been literally instant. So as soon as it stops blinking, you can pull the binding tool out. Now what they don't mention in the manual is that at this point, you need to turn the entire system off. Turn off any control to your receiver. Turn off the transmitter. Turn it back on. And now you notice that the green light is no longer blinking. Now you can turn on the receiver. And there we go. Now I have power. It's bound. It's working. I've got a servo working. I've got my second channel, my throttle working. And this is ready to go. Now to test the FSGT2, I hooked it up in Chimera A my famous slash 4x4 all-terrain basher project. Just driving it around, honestly, I couldn't tell the difference between using this radio or my Airtronics radio. Everything felt the same, whether I was hammering the throttle or finessing it and going at slower speeds. Responsiveness? Well, see for yourself. There is a little bit of a delay, but I guarantee it's imperceptible to casual hobbyists. Only a world-class racer would be able to feel the delay that's in this system. It's about the same as you'll feel on any other low-end radio system by any major manufacturer. Now, maximum range is something that folks often ask about. How far will a vehicle go on a given radio system? How many feet? How many yards? Well, I honestly find that the biggest limiting factor on range is the human eye. Once you go beyond a certain distance, you really just can't control your vehicle anymore because you can't tell what direction it's facing. Front, back, left, right, they all look the same. It's all just a tiny little dot. For this test here, going all the way to the other end of this parking lot, I had to use the full 10x zoom on my camera and still the truck was not looking all that large. This was a distance of about 150 yards, approximately. And as you can see, I still had full control of the truck. Obviously, this was not pushing the range limitations of this radio system, so I had to find an area where I could get even farther away. Now this is going a distance of about 0.2 miles. It's around 1,000 feet or 350 yards. I literally could not tell what the truck was doing with my naked eye. I had to look through the camera at full 10x zoom and it was still difficult to make it out. But as you can see, I was still able to control the truck at that distance. Suffice to say, the FSGT2 radio system has all the range that you'll ever be able to use unless you're wearing binoculars and running a world speed record attempt car. The Flysky FSGT2 radio system. It's comfortable. It gives you hassle-free 2.4 gigahertz reliability, and it costs a mere $30 at hobbyparts.com. Best of all, additional receivers are only $15 each. It's not a high-end racing radio, and it doesn't pretend to be. It has minimal bells and whistles. Throttle, steering, trims, dual rate, and reversing. That's it. But if you're a casual hobbyist and that's all that you need, then you, my friend, are in luck. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you again soon.